Welcome to Females and Fine Fettle, from Wiped Out to Wealthy. This is where conscientious women entrepreneurs and women living like a boss come to learn about balancing their personal and professional wellness with ease. If you have the enthusiasm, motivation, and grit to make it happen, then listen up every Monday. To be sure you don't miss an episode, sign up for weekly updates at femalesandfinefettle.com. The following discussion is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease. Please don't apply any of this information without first speaking with your doctor. Now, here are your hosts, Denise Pasquinelli and Dr. Michelle, your natural women's health advocates who blend the wisdom of ancient healing traditions and the science of functional medicine. Hey there, and welcome back to another episode, and happy July. This month, we're tackling the theme of creativity and play, which is a topic near and dear to my heart. I'm not sure if any of you know this, but before I turned all science bio nerd alert, I was actually an art major. I know. Weird. (laughs) I was super artsy, you know, throughout uh, junior high and high school and actually ended up being accepted to the Emily Carr Institute up in Vancouver, Canada and the Academy of Art in San Francisco. But something happened and maybe, you know, thankfully just in time. But basically, I was taking this one course. I think it was actually a a community college level course that I was taking in high school. And I got a B on a project. (laughs) Now, (laughs) I know some of you are like, yeah, so what? But I know my high achieving sisters out there know what I mean when I was like, (laughs) WTF, I don't get Bs. (laughs) Now, to be honest, you know, I what it wasn't even really the B that bothered me. It was that I got a B because the instructor was judging my work and basically Mm -hmm. didn't really like it or wasn't that impressed. Um, You know, even though I totally fulfilled the requirements of the assignment, it was just his opinion of my work. So, you know, it was in that moment that I knew that I couldn't pursue an art career. I couldn't stand the possibility of living a life where I measured my self-worth or my success based on someone's opinion. Like looking back now, it seems so insignificant, you know, but it was this really pivotal moment in my life. And I'm so grateful that I made that shift um, or else, you know, I probably would not be here with you. (laughs) The cool thing is I still get to use my creative abilities and my everyday work. And I'm always looking for ways to integrate it further. And that's really what we're going to talk about today, how to integrate creativity and play into our daily lives on the personal, interpersonal, professional, societal, and spiritual level. Mm, I didn't know that about you. (laughs) I love that. Um, And I love that you said that you knew you didn't want to pursue a career in Mm. art. And I think that's a really great distinction because art and creativity, curiosity, play, all of that can be a big part of our lives simply for the sheer joy of creating. No requirement (laughs) to make a bunch of money from it. Um, I actually just finished listening to Elizabeth Gilbert's book called Big Magic. It's about creativity and And in it, she describes pursuing our curiosities as a method of living a creative lifestyle, which I just love. Um, Sometimes through that exploration process, we might stumble on like a really big, amazing creative project idea. And sometimes we might not. We simply might just enjoy the pursuit of being curious our whole life long. And I love that reframe because it's something we all can do and it will always act as a compliment to whatever it is that we do choose as a career path, as we will discuss today. Yes, I I love relating creativity to exploration and curiosity. And this concept actually, you know, uh, can relate to any of our Funky Five today. But this idea also makes me think of my mom. Hey, mama. Um, when I was <laughs> younger, my mom would be driving around, maybe, you know, picking me up from school or daycare, or maybe we were just I don't know, running errands, but this woman loved getting lost. I mean, maybe she still does. I don't know. But um, I'm pretty sure I used to get annoyed at the time, right, as a kid. But (laughs) looking back, I can totally appreciate it and see the creativity and the play that was, 
you know, inspired, um, inspiring her. And then also what she was kind of sharing with me. I mean, you know, who gets lost anymore? Basically no one, (laughs) unless, unless we're out of GPS range, which is something I feel like we have to consciously strive to do nowadays. But, um, you know, she just loved seeing new streets, finding new ways to get around, looking at the different houses or yards or finding, you know, obscure garage sales. She was just like way mm-hmm. into it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that. That's such a sweet memory. <laughs> um, and yes, to getting lost. I love that. Getting lost is harder and harder to do. Also, as technology creates very direct paths to the answer answers we may seek. Mm -hmm. And like, don't get me wrong. I love that I can Google just about anything and figure out what I wanted to know. But I also love to get lost in the bookshelves or even lost in the act of reading a book. It's a very different experience. Mm. I think I've mentioned before that I am an information scientistista. Scientista. (laughs) (laughs) information scientist. And I just rediscovered an article that I wrote when I was in grad school that was on this topic, kind of, sort of. And the article was called (laughs) The Industrialization of the Mind and How the Book May Save Us. I love it. It kind of grabs me up now, but... I was exploring, at the time I was really interested in exploring the way online information seeking maybe changing our brains. Mm. So kind of conditioning them to have a question, seek an answer and end the cycle, which is pretty mechanical. If you think about it, like a very mechanical way to approach learning. And I was concerned then with the change to the brain, like what that, what the implications of that would be. And I was curious about what would be lost in that process. So things like creativity and original ideas and the ability to concentrate were up at the top of my list Mm -hmm. as things that might be lost if we really mechanize that way of approaching information. Mm -hmm. So just as industrialization of most commercial goods has caused a severe disconnect with our relationship to natural resources, like if you think about industrialization of food or the garment industry, Those are areas where we're really disconnected from the root of those objects. I started to wonder what would occur if we were disconnected from the practice of letting our minds just wander and get lost. I think that long form writing gives our brains space to wander and imagine and turn over an author's words along with our own memories and observations and imaginations. So it's not necessarily about what we have read, but where our minds journeyed while we were reading, like what kind of quiet and personal intro- introspections were um, like given the grace to just exist in that process. Totally. I, this is the exact reason why I need to start integrating more fiction into my reading list. Mm, yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm a total nonfiction addict, but my left brain needs some downtime, right? And, and fiction is mm-hmm. such an awesome way to stimulate our right brain's imagination and boost, you know, not just that creativity in the moment, but really at other times and in other areas of our lives. Totally. Yeah, I love that. The call to read fiction. And summertime is a great time to start reading a little more fiction. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're enjoying the long days. Anywho, applying all of this to a personal approach of integrating creativity and play into our lives, we want to pose a little two-part challenge for you all. First, to drop the narrative that you're not a creative person simply because your career is not artist or creative director. Get curious about how you do create or what gets you curious, and you can define what creativity is for you. And the second part of this challenge is to get lost. <laughs> like, Get lost today. Give yourself the opportunity to wander, imagine, explore, have a new thought. You could take a cue from Michelle's mom and take a different (laughs) route home tonight. See what new things you see. Or you could close the computer and get lost in a printed text, like an actual book. I know, right? (laughs) I know, I know. And write notes with a pen and a notebook and let your mind fall into relationship with the words on the page. I love it. 
Um, so those are all awesome kind of creativity on a personal level um, examples. Um, but, you know, what about playing with our friends, our families or, you know, other close relationships in our life? You know, it seems like we get so bogged down with adulting <laughs> that we yeah. just, you know, we we just let it go. It's like one of those first, ling- first things that we let go along with self-care, of course. Um, but, you know, you might have that one friend who has game nights, (laughs) but as we get deep into our 30s and beyond, it can seem harder and harder to find the time, the friends, and even the motivation, right, to really Mm -hmm. let loose. But having those times of play and creativity with friends um, is super, super, super important, but it's also really important to keep things alive um, with our partners. So when we have, you know, new experiences with someone we love, we get some serious hits of dopamine, which is the neurotransmitter associated with falling in love. So it's a great way to kind of keep that spark alive long term. Mm, I love that. (laughs) I, you know, it can be tough to come up with new ways to play together, Mm -hmm. uh, especially in the moment. And I love the idea of creating something like a playlist, which is what I actually, I heard that from you, Dr. Michelle. (laughs) or something I like to call a joy jar, which is basically either one of those things is just a collection of ideas of fun things you want to do or try. And they can help you tap into some of those ideas when you find yourself with some free playtime available to you. So this can be super helpful to break you out of a rut and find new ideas for exploring the world together in a new and fun, fresh way. Mm -hmm. This could be something that you turn to just for you or to explore with a romantic partner, a friend, a child, or even your pet. Mm. I wrote an article about the joy jar, creating your own joy jar, jo- jo- <laughs> creating your own joy jar. Um, and we'll link to that in the show notes. It has some ideas for ways that you can bring a little more play into your days. And I'm sure you have a lot of ideas already yourselves, but yes. you can check out that article. I love the joy jar idea. It's kind of fun to say. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Anyways, we are, you know, creatures of habit. And I think that we can all relate to slipping into patterns that are anything but stimulating. Binging Netflix, anyone? (laughs) So, you know, I think having that playlist or that joy jar, um, you know, handy is a really awesome way to get inspiration and make sure that you're actually doing the things that bring you joy. Yeah, and I love that extra benefit of a dopamine boost. I know, right? It's really exciting. Um, Speaking of binging on Netflix, I wasn't binging on Netflix. (laughs) But I recently rewatched the movie Eat, Pray, Love mm-hmm. <laughs> based on that Elizabeth Gilbert book. I'm on a real Liz Gilbert kick right now, I guess. Um, but anyway, there's this part in the movie when she's in Italy with her new friends and one of the Italian guys starts ranting at her about how Americans feel guilty for experiencing pleasure. I think it was because she was talking about, oh, I've been here for two months and all I've done is learned a few Italian words and eaten and gained weight or whatever. So he's like, oh, you Americans feel so guilty for experiencing pleasure. And talked about the idea that we think we need to work and work and work and then burn out. And then we feel like we've earned the right to some sort of treat, which might look like binge watching TV for the weekend. But that's different than pleasure because pleasure isn't really numbing out. It requires the senses to be engaged. And maybe we could even say um, a little dopamine burst in the brain. I don't know. But anyway, in the scene, he goes on to say, Italians know that they deserve pleasure. It's part of the everyday. And they bring up this Italian term, dolce far niente. Hopefully I said that right. Well done. (laughs) And it encapsulates it pretty well and loosely translates to the sweetness of doing nothing. The scene is super cute. And I think it relates to the pursuit of creativity and play from a social perspective. So cute. (laughs) (laughs) totally so anyway the way that I see this relating is 
we've talked about the power of words many times on this podcast, and I think it relates here too. So this idea that we should feel guilty for taking a break or doing nothing or eating rich food or enjoying ourselves, getting off task, yada, yada, yada. It's all very common. It's like a very common experience to feel guilt about that. We talk about how naughty we were for taking a long lunch break or cheating on our diet or even the idea of I work hard, I play hard, like they're tip for tap like that. I know for me, this is kind of tough. Like I definitely default to feeling like I need to earn rest or treat myself for working hard, but I'm trying to be a little more laid back and bring a little more ease into the everyday. It does seem to have me feeling lighter and brighter. And I don't think it's just play and leisure that tend to be downplayed in our culture. Um, so are acts of creativity. Like creative acts are fine if they result in something productive, but creativity for creativity's sake is not often revered. And you can see this by the way it's being yanked from public schools at a heartbreaking rate. So let's make a pact to not entwine rest and play and creativity with guilt and conditions. Maybe we can start to practice speaking about and prioritizing these delightful pursuits just as we would work because it is important and feeling guilt just creates a downward spiral straight towards burnout. Hmm. Rest is important to preventing burnout and it helps us to cultivate that slow burn that's required to do really cool shit in our lives. (laughs) So, I mean, like including enjoying our life. That's that's a cool thing in and of itself. Plus, the truth is during those periods of feeling relaxed and rested and in a state of pleasure, those are the times we're most likely to come up with fresh ideas. And I'm not trying to dangle a carrot here or make a condition. I'm just stating a fact. And that's that neuroscience finds that when we're idle and in a calm, leisure-like state, our brains actually behave differently. Connections are made in parts of our brain that don't typically communicate. So a random thought, an obscure memory, a new piece of information or an image, they can all combine in a fresh new way to produce a fresh new idea. Mm -hmm. Sometimes referred to as like an aha moment. This topic is covered more deeply in a really cool book called Overwhelmed, Work, Love, and Play When No One Has Time by Bridget Schulte, and it leads us to ways to explore the topic of play at work. Yes, that is so, so true. Some of my best ideas come to me when I'm meditating. And, you know, I used to kind of try and shut down my mind because like, oh, got to gotta quiet that mind. Like, got to do it real quick, you know. But I've really learned to lessen that judgment and just let my mind um, quiet naturally. But I find that I get a lot of great ideas and insight um, to the point where I actually have to have my notepad near me so I can write down <laughs> the things while they're still fresh. Oh, that's great. That's exciting. Um, I used to work at a tech company where one of the head designers would periodically take play dates. Like he'd take a whole day out of the office working And gathering inspiration from the outside world. So he didn't really have expectations or goal in mind. He just simply went out and noticed things. He followed his curiosity. He noticed colors that he was drawn to. He'd sketch and take pictures and come back with new connections that maybe applied to his work or they might not. But it definitely shook him out of any rut that he may have been stuck in. And I thought it was a really cool thing that he would do. And I love that he modeled that practice at work. Heck yes, I love that idea. I've actually I've actually done a lot of reading and research regarding entrepreneurs. And it's almost common practice across the board that these highly successful people schedule in that creative white space, Mm -hmm. you know, like time for them to decompress and step away and maybe stimulate other areas of their mind and really allow space for inspiration. Love it. So yeah, I guess takeaway there is let's create time for creativity and play, even in our work schedules. Mm -hmm. So 
Creativity and play are also the ultimate heart openers. So think about a child, like children run around with totally open hearts and all they want to do is have ideas and ask questions and play and be curious. And so when we think about a spiritual practice, if the goal is to tap into our hearts and our intuition and a divine guidance, then that is precisely what a creative habit can help us to do. So it could be that as we consider creativity and play through the lens of spirituality, that maybe we consider a creative practice to be synonymous with the spiritual practice. Ooh, yes, mm. it's, it's that you know child's mind that we hear so much about in the spiritual world, right? Approaching mm-hmm. everything with this sense of curiosity. Maybe that means avoiding dogma. Maybe that means dabbling in various practices. Maybe that means mm. finding your own path and just listening to what really feels right with it, within your own mind, body, and spirit, right? Totally, yeah. And so I guess the key then becomes going back to the top of this episode, and that is to understand what creativity really means for you. It could be painting, drawing, sculpting, Or it could be singing, dancing, baking, gardening, creating a beautiful home or a nourishing meal, or even cultivating an amazing conversation with somebody or even writing poetry. Like there are endless ways to be creative in this world. Mm -hmm. Anything that allows us to work with our imaginations and open our hearts, follow our curiosities and express our soul, that is a way to connect with spirit. Mm -hmm. All right. On that note... Let's wrap for this week. And if you're liking what you hear, please leave us a review. It's super simple. All you have to do is go to iTunes, search for Females in Fine Fettle, and drop us a love note. (laughs) We love to know that you're enjoying the show. And when you share your experience, it helps other rad ladies like you to find the show. So please, if you feel called to do that, do so. As for next week, we're taking a deep dive into creative creativity and play as it relates to us on a personal level. And we're going to look into the chakras, which is going to be really fun. So be sure to tune in. Thank you for listening to Females and Fine Fettle from Wiped Out to Wealthy, a podcast to fit your lifestyle. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at femalesandfinefettle.com. If you have questions or topic ideas for upcoming episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to tune in next week.